What's going on everybody? My name's Tenebris Infinite and welcome to 6 Tips and Tricks for Guerrilla Warfare and Generation Zero. So before we break into the tips and tricks, let's explain what Guerrilla Warfare is. Guerrilla Warfare is essentially a form of irregular warfare in which small groups of combatants, such as armed civilians or irregular forces, use strategic military tactics including ambushes, raids, petty warfare, hit and run tactics, and mobility to fight a larger and more opposing adversary. Guerrilla strategy aims to magnify the impact of a small, mobile force on a larger, more cumbersome one. So with that in mind, most of the combat that you perform in Generation Zero is in some way or another guerrilla combat. So I thought it would be great to get this solidified down to a science and give you dudes some tips and tricks to make sure your guerrilla warfare is top notch. Now without any further ado, let's get into these tips. Today we'll be going over terrain and being aware of the area you fight in. We'll be talking about cover and the two types of cover that you can use in the game. We'll be talking about balancing your damage output to multitask large groups of opponents. We'll be talking about run and gun tips, hit and run tips, and the good old TTR or tactical teleportation retreat. Now with terrain you could get really really technical about things, but I've decided to separate terrain into five categories to keep things kinda simple here. You have forests, you have suburban environments, you have mountainous environments, you have farmlands and kinda plains types of environments, and then you have deforested environments here in Generation Zero. Now first things first, the forest region. The forest region offers some of the most visual coverage that you get in the game in the form of all of these bushes and branches and trees that stand in your way. And then on top of that as well, forests offer these impervious to bullets trees that I guess must be native to Sweden or something. But these trees are going to be your ultimate form of defense against most of the incoming fire from machines. And then on top of that, you can also get yourself various rock outcrops that will defend you as well. The small rock outcrops don't provide very much coverage at all, but if you manage to find yourself a large rock in a forest, that's your ultimate wall right there. Now, urban and suburban environments are something that I could probably make an entirely separate video on. So let me know if you dudes want to see some urban and suburban combat tips. But the forms of cover that you could find in urban and suburban areas are completely numerous. So you have various areas like warehouses, uh, little rock walls and outcrops and unenterable buildings. And then on top of that, you also have enterable buildings, which can provide a very great source of cover from bullets and even larger interior spaces that can provide excellent cover from any sort of explosives or uh, any sort of miscellaneous attacks that the machines might have against you. For the next area, we're going to talk about mountainous areas. So mountainous areas are really plentiful with their cover. They offer all of the benefits of forests, but they also offer elevation to them. And this elevation can be both a good thing and a bad thing depending on the circumstance and what you're fighting against. Now this can also work against you though, because if the enemies have any sort of mortar or rocket launcher, the rockets will have less travel time to actually explode and impact in your vicinity. So whenever you're fighting against enemies that have shoulder attached mortars or tank rocket pods or harvester rocket pods, you have to be kind of mindful of the elevation you have and how that's going to affect rocket and mortar travel time. Now for the uh, uh, second to last sort of terrain that you can see in the game, it's the farmlands and plains. And these are the most plentiful forms of terrain that you can see actually here in Generation Zero. Uh, outside of forests because it's, it's roughly a fairly even split between plains, farmlands, and forest regions. So with plains and farmlands, uh, they offer the least amount of cover in the whole game. A lot of times you're going to be forced into situations where you have to actually use your mobility over using the terrain to benefit you. But there are certain locations and certain props and assets across the farmlands that can really benefit you.
A lot of times in farmlands, you'll be able to find these small little mounds that have trees on them. And again, the trees will act as both visual coverage and also as a physical coverage because the trees are impervious to bullets. You can also find sparse uh, rock outcrops, and a lot of times you'll be able to find large rocks relatively easy due to the fact that you have actually a lot more visibility in these locations than you do in the forest regions. Now, I kind of lump together plains and farmlands because they share a lot of really similar traits. A lot of times in plains areas, you'll only be able to find sparse outcrops of trees, so you won't find a, a maximum amount of coverage. And a lot of times you'll be forced into a scenario where you have to kind of use the terrain to your advantage. But one of the big benefits of both the farmlands and the plains is that they're very swoopy and they have like kind of rolling hills on them and a lot of times you can use those hills to your advantage because they aren't as steep as mountains so they don't really impact rocket travel time but they are big enough that they are able to provide some physical coverage for your character. A lot of times, though, with the plains and the farmlands being rather barren, you have to really rely on run-and-gun tactics in order to use them to their maximum potential. Now, for the last environment that we're going to go over today, we're going to talk about deforested areas. Now, deforested areas are almost like the polar opposite to forested areas, offering very minimal amounts of cover and some of the most rugged terrain that you'll find in the game. But ultimately, a tree is still a tree, and so the tree stumps that you can find in the area are excellent sources of cover from, uh, from various small arms and bullets. Uh, it's, it's no good cover for mortars or explosives, but as long as you can neutralize that off the enemy, you'll be able to keep yourself relatively safe from any sort of incoming gunfire. Now, with these environments being very difficult to kind of traverse across, uh, it's, it's kind of better to jump a lot when you're moving through a deforested area just to make sure that you aren't getting caught on any lying logs on the ground or any of the sticks or various hazards that you'll find in the area. Equally though, in the deforested areas, a lot of times you can find large piles of lumber and those large piles of lumber are, again, an excellent source of cover. Now, those are all of the environments that you'll be able to find in Generation Zero. Now, when you're in those environments, it's good to be aware of that type of environment, to understand that, hey, I'm in a deforested area, so I should probably jump around a lot, make sure that I'm keeping myself agile as I'm moving through this tricky terrain. Or, hey, I'm in the farmland, so I should probably look for one of these outcrops of rocks or trees in order to make sure that I have some sort of cover when I'm out in the open. Now, you could take this thought process to a very multifaceted level, and I think that that's what kind of separates the strong from the weak when it comes to guerrilla gameplay here in Generation Zero. Being able to analyze your terrain and make the most out of it within a split second of thinking. Now, the two types of coverage that you could find in Generation Zero are physical coverage and visible coverage. And the thing to keep in mind whenever you're using any sort of coverage here in Generation Zero is that physical coverage is always visible coverage, but visible coverage is never physical coverage. Now, something as small as this set of twigs here can actually provide visible coverage, but it will never stop any bullets from actually hitting you. And here I'm going to demonstrate how visible coverage is always visible coverage and how physical coverage is always visible coverage. So here are a couple prime examples of visible and physical coverage. So with the visible coverage, you can see here that the tank is going to attack at my last known location in this clip. Now, this is a huge benefit to us as the player in terms of guerrilla warfare, because with the tank focusing on our last known location, we can use that to kind of peek out weak points on the tank or the hunters or whatever enemies you're actually fighting. 
And now here for the physical coverage, physical coverage can do much of the same, where you can use it visually to keep the enemy attacking a certain location, or you can also just use it as a steel wall because the trees are absolutely bulletproof, so there's no point in not utilizing the tree in order to minimize the amount of damage you're taking. Now, a big reason why the experimental KVM feels like such a powerful gun in Generation Zero is because it balances your damage output for you, and it gradually softens the entire group. So if you don't like multitasking very much, you really want to shoot for this gun because it will be a huge benefit to you in terms of your general combat. But if you do like multitasking, then this tip is absolutely for you because honestly, utilizing this approach to combat, you can get through combat much, much smoother and much more swiftly and with less damage coming into you, which is kind of the really big thing about guerrilla warfare, is trying to minimize the amount of damage that you take in by using various forms of strategy. Now you can see here that by spreading out my damage across the entire group of hunters here, I'm able to take down the pack much more efficiently. And as well here, you can see what I was talking about, how the rolling hills of plains locations can provide an excellent source of cover, as the harvester isn't able to attack me at all. One less thing to focus on allows me to multitask the group of hunters a lot more easy. Now, one last example of how balancing damage output can make the entire combat flow much smoother. Uh, you can watch how I kind of selectively pick my targets based on how much damage I've done to them. Now, with runners, you don't really need to do this because they're so lightweight that they just go down after a small volley of bullets. But uh, still, on the other hand, it's always smart to kind of balance your damage output uh, even when you're dealing with runners, just to make sure that you're making your combat flow a little bit smoother, uh, just in case if you aren't good with those gas tank shots. But balancing your damage isn't just something that you should think about when you're fighting enemies up close. Balancing your damage output is also incredibly optimal for when you're trying to snipe a larger group of enemies. Instead of just sniping down one enemy at a time, it's better to kind of aim and spread out the damage amongst all of your targets, and then kind of take them all down in quick succession. Now we're going to talk about run and gun tips and tricks. And run and gun is one of those things where it's, it's a matter of tempo. So it's all about finding the right tempo for what you're fighting and how you're fighting it. Uh, and then again, also kind of pulling back to talking about the various environments of Generation Zero, it's also a matter of keeping in mind the environment you're in so that that way you can properly utilize that environment to the fullest. So you can see here that I'm using this mound in order to kind of create both physical and visible coverage from the tank as it's trying to attack me. 
Now you can see here that by using the mound as the coverage and then using my pacing to move from either side of the tank to peek out these weak points, I'm able to attack this tank continuously without having very much incoming fire coming towards me. Even with hunters and runners trying to attack me from all sides, I've been using this mound the entire time to block a lot of their incoming fire and making sure that they can't actually hit me or get a good beat on me. Uh, the other thing too is there was a seeker and it managed to pull the tank into an even more favorable position. And you can see here that as the tank launches its mortar, it's launching it at my last known location that it's got, which is quite far from where I actually am. Now keeping the hill in between me and the hunters, I'm able to negate any sort of machine gun fire that they have, and taking down this hunter with the sniper rifle removes the kind of immediate threat that I have. Now for another example of some run and gun kind of gameplay here, uh, I'm out in the plains area where there's less coverage, but you can see that I utilize the hill in order to block incoming machine gun fire, and also with the sparse trees, I make a break for the trees in order to utilize them as a form of kind of in the moment cover. Now here is where I kind of made a bit of a mistake with my tempo, and I should have actually waited for the tank to make its attack before I started moving out. Uh, and that's, again, just the kind of thing where it's like, in the moment, you have to kind of observe and be aware of the machines you're fighting and the attack pace that they have. Now here is where you can see me using that tree in order to kind of avoid the incoming fire. And again, you can see me utilizing the various uh, visual cover in order to keep the tank attacking a particular spot while I'm moving out to attack it. So run and gun is one of those things where you have to get a certain feel for it as you're doing it. But uh, honestly, in the end, run and gun play is some of the most efficient, aggressive combat that you can have in Generation Zero. Now let's talk about a more defensive style of play with hit and run tips. Alright, so now for our second last bit of gorilla tips for the day, we're going to talk about hit and run tactics. So just like with the run and gun tactics, you have to think about hit and run tactics as a certain tempo, whereas run and gun ta tactics have like a really fast kind of tempo to them, hit and run tactics have a much slower tempo to them. The other thing too that differentiates hit and run strategies from run and gun strategies is the use of utility items. In hit and run strategies, it's actually incredibly viable to be using a lot of diversionary uh, utility items like fireworks or flares to kind of keep the machine's focus off of you and on a particular location so that that way they're a little bit easier to hit and run from without them returning very much fire towards you. Now another way to think about the difference between run and gun and hit and run tactics is that with run and gun tactics you're keeping a very small circle around a certain enemy or certain location that you're kind of running around that circle really quickly. Whereas with hit and run tactics you're actually having a much wider circle covering a larger expanse of an area and trying to keep the enemies within that larger circle and with the kind of center point of that larger circle. 
Another approach to hit and run strategies is trying to draw your enemies into a favorable location. So you can see here on Himfell that I'm attacking the hunters from up on top of the hill so that that way the hunters will have to come up and around the hill to actually get to me, which will allow me to kind of anticipate their positioning and kind of chip away at them and then once they reach to the point that I want them to reach up here on the hill, I'm able to finish them off really easily. Again, kind of taking into consideration my previous tip about balancing out damage across multiple enemies. Now here you see the hunter is going to be attacking my last known position because I used visual cover to kind of snake my way over more towards his right side. Uh, and again, that's just utilizing the environment that I'm in, knowing that I'm in a mountainous environment with a lot of visual cover, but that mortar is going to have less travel time to actually reach me. So instead of trying to use some sort of physical cover in order to protect myself, I'm utilizing all of the bushes and the trees in order to provide that visual cover to reposition myself and attack the enemy from a more optimal location. Now you can see me here using a kind of wombo combo of flares and fireworks at the same time. With the flares, they'll track the position of the flare and kind of focus their intent uh, to kill on, on the flare itself. Whereas with the firework, that kind of fries their senses and makes them lose track of your position for a short moment in time. So utilizing the wombo combo of the two, plus also all of the visual cover provided by the trees around me, uh, I'm able to kind of kite the enemies and guide them to spots that, again, is just the most optimal favorable locations, keeping them far enough away that they aren't going to be tempted to use their uh, flamethrower on me, uh, but keeping them within a range that is completely controllable for me. Now you do want to be a little bit careful when you're throwing your sticky flares, especially if you're backpedaling because, as you can see here, I managed to get my flare stuck in a tree. After balancing out my damage across the, all of the hunters, they're pretty light work in order for me to take them down in the end here. Alright, so now for the final tip in my Gorilla Tips and Tricks. This one is actually coined by uh, the man, the legend, our very own community manager, Pontus himself. Now we're going to be talking about the tactical teleportation retreat, and kind of more so the thought process that goes behind it. Now what I'm going to say here might blow your minds, but you don't need adrenaline in Generation Zero. Uh, so the thought process behind this is that all of the enemies are persistent in Generation Zero, and the damage that you do to them persists alongside them. Now this means that if you fail a combat scenario, it doesn't ultimately mean that you failed that combat scenario. If you were able to pull off some damage against the machine, then you can find that machine later on down the line in its weakened state and take it down far easier. Now with this in mind, let's look at how much uh, a stack of adrenaline shots weighs and what you could compensate that weight with instead. Now when I say a stack of adrenaline shots, I'm talking about what the maximum limit of adrenaline shots was back when we had the grid-based system. So a stack of adrenaline shots is 20 shots, which is about one pound in your inventory. Now one pound of your inventory is actually quite a lot of weight, and what you could substitute this with is either 10 simple med kits, 40 BMG rounds, or 250 762 rounds. Now the amount of adrenaline you carry might vary. It might actually be less than 20 shots, or it might be far more than 20 shots. 
But in reality, you probably don't need to carry any adrenaline shots at all. Especially if you've been following my tips and tricks up until this point. So again, this tip is more of a line of thought. Do you really need all the adrenaline that you're carrying? Or would that be better served to med kits that will keep you alive in the middle of the fight? Or carrying more bullets to allow you to dish out more damage? In terms of guerrilla warfare, you're aiming to minimize the amount of damage given to you by the opponent. So, ultimately, the goal should be to not die in the middle of combat. So there you dudes go, uh, six tips and tricks for guerrilla combat in Generation Zero. And I want to know, how many of these tips and tricks do you dudes do naturally without thinking about it? Uh, and then on top of that, were any of these tips and tricks really useful to any of you dudes? If they were, let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I've been Tenebris, you've been awesome, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you dudes in the next one. Until then, peace.